607, I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, and um, are there any adjustments to the select board agenda for tonight? I don't have any. I don't okay. have any. I guess the only adjustment I would make is that I did have a conversation with Brandy earlier. It sounds like maybe she's going to try to connect, but um, she definitely said that she would not be at this meeting tonight. So, um, and we didn't have any payroll and stuff to sign, right? That's no. Um, when I, I stopped at the town office, um, <clears throat> and she was doing payroll, but that's all she was going to be able to get to. Okay. Um, so, and then she'll do the um, accounts receivable over the, the AP and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any public comment at all? Okay. I don't hear any at the moment. Um, so we don't have bills to approve. So we'll just skip over that. Um, we do have the minutes from the April 27th meeting and the um, May 5th special select board meeting um, to approve. Um, do I hear a motion to approve those at all? So moved. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And I those have a question mi regarding minutes, uh, Michael. Yes. Yeah. Um, have we been posting the minutes? I saw something on Facebook that minutes were not posted. Is there an issue with that? Um, the, the minutes usually get posted on the website and on uh, Front Porch Forum. Okay. And I don't know if Laura has been posting them on the Facebook uh, page that we have or not. Brian. Have the minutes um, been getting posted? They have not been regular. They normally are because they have not been signed by the time I get there some weeks. And with all the office hours being tweaked, if I, they're not there on Monday when I come in, and if they're not there on Wednesday and they're not signed and ready for me, then I'm not there again until the next Monday. And this week, because of Brandy's illness, we didn't go in. Okay. I just, I someone had made a comment that the minutes hadn't been posted. I was, I was unaware that it hadn't been done and just wanted to find out why that was. I think it would be great to post the unsigned digital version in this case, at least for a couple of weeks, possibly. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think nope. we necessarily have to post the signed ones. Nope. As as nope. We, if we've approved them at the meeting, um, then, you know, they're fine, fine to go out. Correct. So, um, but the, the ones from the last meeting uh, are still sitting on the table with only right. one signature. Right. So that's and why they never got to, to Laura's desk. Right. And the other, the, the, these two that we just um, approved are also on the table in the former select board gotcha. meeting room. So okay. um, they can be signed. I've signed them and, and they can be and signed. I'll be by tomorrow to sign the minutes. Okay. Yeah, may as well. Right. And Laura, I could... Um, email the uh, minutes to you even though they aren't signed so that you would be able to post them from home if you wanted that would be a great plan okay that i yep, will do that's that a good idea i'll do that first thing in the morning perfect it looks like okay. gary clark might be joining the meeting in a minute as well he just asked for a password okay all right, right. Eric clark. um so we don't have a town treasurer's report um so i guess we would move on to the town clerk's report Oh. Well, it's it's been quiet. I have a lot of uh, attorneys who can't come in to do their research, so they're asking me to send them things, and I'm sending them what I can, and they seem to be happy with that. Um, because of Brandy's illness and not knowing how bad it was, you know, uh, Laura should stay home with her son anyways, and so I'm taking a couple days off out of the office until... Um, we until she figures out how sick she is. Right. Uh, otherwise, in uh, April, I didn't get any recording at all. So that's all caught up. The only thing I'm, I haven't done yet, because it's so boring, is the minutes from the town meeting. <laughs> Bad. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I know how boring minutes can be. Believe yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially those, they're long. Mm. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you, I, I don't have my agenda here. Uh, if you have a separate uh, section for the FEMA update. I don't know. Nope. Okay. Well, uh, okay. I'll give you that. Uh, Jeremy is expecting to come probably sometime this week to start his final reclamation work, which okay. just involves final grading and some uh, 
Topsoil, seed, and mulch. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we're going to talk about the landscaping at another point, right? Is that, that is on the agenda if you, if you would. If you'd like to talk about the tiny, I did put it on the agenda. I don't know if Diana heard me. No, I didn't hear that. Uh, it is on the agenda. But not right now? Uh, it's actually right after the town clerk's report. Okay. <laughs> well, I did find out that uh, we can't do anything, even the landscaping, until we get our final FEMA site visit. Mm -hmm. So who know, I don't know whether somebody's going to have to come from Boston or what, but as far as uh, we thought it would be a good idea, or Russell thought it would be a good idea if we hire him uh, to order some plants now, because you can get the best plants uh, if you wait until July to order plants, they're not, not as good, <laughs> not mm -hmm. as much of a selection. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so, so um, are, are we, have we, you know, is, is Russell Richardson going to be the person doing the landscaping? Well, that's what you're going to, that's what you're going to decide. I mean, I think, okay. I don't know of anybody else. It's not like it's an amount that has to go out to a competitive bid. It's not town money, it's grant money. Okay. So, uh, and I don't know how much of the, uh, I have his plan here, but I don't know how much of it is actually his work. Uh, but if anyone's interested in seeing the, the simple plan that we've uh, come up with, let me know. There's not a drawing, so it's just some fencing and some shrubbery and, a nice tree in the middle. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> uh, I know Russell did the uh, other side, you know, the park area um, a few years ago. Those, uh, um, those have done really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I guess I would ask and Paul and Brian. And we're planning something that would kind of match. Yeah, um, I guess I would ask Paul and Brian how they feel about having um, Russell Richardson do the landscaping. We'll do that one. Uh, when is the guy coming to do the uh, the seeding and mulching? I think that's he said sometime this week. Okay, all right. Uh, I I don't object. If that's ultimately where we're headed, I don't. We do we have a total cost for this project yet? Which which part? The landscaping. I put in a I put in seventy five hundred dollars for for the grant, and that's what was to the Woodbury the Fund. Woodbury fund. Yeah. I don't know if it'll be that much. So was that to the Woodbury Fund? Excuse me? That was the grants to the Woodbury Fund? Right. So we would be buying this in anticipation of uh, getting paid back from that? So we already have the money. Oh, oh, we do. Oh, well, I don't object to it then. They sent the check. <laughs> okay, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. The, the rest of what Jeremy's going to do for the cleanup, that's about a total of yeah. seven 7,000 something that we held back from the other. Family. Right, which is so. still part of FEMA. Yeah. Right. My microphone's working okay. I know we had an issue with that before, so. No, you coming in loud and clear. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, so I think I heard Brian say that he yep. was okay with that. Yeah, yep. okay. Yeah. So, you know, it sounds like we're, Slack Board is in agreement to have Russell Richardson do the work. So, you know, mm -hmm. if he wanted to buy, we have the money, it sounds like, if he wanted to buy those plants, he has a way of kind of keeping them alive, I assume. I assume so. It yeah. won't frost anymore, ha, ha, ha. Ha ha ha, right. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we should just have him do what he feels he needs to do. Yeah, to he just wanted to have this, to know that he was going to do this job so he could plan for. So do we need a motion for that? I suppose to be totally above board, we probably should, yeah. yeah. So I'll make a motion that we hire Russell. Uh, what was the cost, Diana, $7,500? Right. Uh, for the fee is seventy five hundred dollars to do the landscaping for the uh, plot of land where the store was. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good. So now we're official. Um, anything else from from our town clerk? Any other questions? I have none. none for me. The door, keeping the door locked doesn't seem to have been a problem. I get a knock okay. every once in a while if somebody. Yeah. 
need something notarized, I go out on the porch and. Yeah. So just a, a little update on um, about Brandy. Um, you know, I did I did stop in this morning. She had requested that somebody bring the timesheets and uh, um, accounts, you know, invoices to her, and and she was actually there when I stopped to pick those up. Um, she definitely is very ill. Um, it doesn't look like it's COVID-19, but you know, what do I know? It doesn't have some of the typical symptoms, but she was going to have blood work done and um, and try to get to the bottom of what whatever it is that's going on for her. But she definitely looked pretty sick and was just trying to get the payroll out for, um, for folks for today. So we're that muted. was very good of her. We're muted, aren't we? Yeah, so, um, okay, so uh, let's move on. Actually, um, I don't know, we could, um, I know there's, I have a feeling um, that there are a number of people here about the town zoning application. Um, we could do that next or we could move right into the town hiring report. Um, I don't care either way. So whoever most people want to comment on or whatever. Yeah, right. Maybe maybe we should stick to the agenda because there might be people that would be coming in a little okay. bit later. Um, well, so, exactly okay, all right. So um, first up on the um, town highway report is appointing a road commissioner. Um, and I just to bring people up to speed with what's happening with that. Um, we did have an interview um, with Chuck Batchelder this past Tuesday at the special select board meeting that we had. Um, he is interested in the position. Um, and, you know, our, our concern and, and discussion about uh, perhaps having a road commissioner sort of started with the, um, when we were working on the fiscal year 21 budget at the end of the, this past year, um, just you know, feeling some frustration and and not being able to um, you know completely or appropriately answer different questions about issues that were being brought to in front of us um, as a select board. Um, we just thought that maybe having someone in this post might assist both the select board and and the road crew, kind of be a a go between. Um, to just for better um, better communication with town residents and the select board and the road crew, uh, et cetera. So um, that sounds so, about right, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So and just for some sir, some context for everybody too. By by statute, since we don't have a road commissioner, we have a road foreman. Um, the board is ends up getting charged with a lot of the duties of the road commissioner by statute. Uh, right. And then apparently when the uh, job description was written for our current foreman, a lot of the duties uh, that would necessarily be filled by the commissioner aren't on the road foreman's job description either. So what you have is a kind of a gap in wh what should and can be done, uh, which ends up falling to the board. And Michael has been, you know, pretty well doing yeoman service, trying to be kind of the go-between uh, for some of those things. And uh, speaking for me, it, it's become a kind of an untenable position because uh, we get complaints um, on, on Greg's behalf. He gets a com complaint from me, for example, and he's getting three or four, you know, three people talking to him about these complaints. And we're not able to really respond to that. You know, when someone comes into the meeting, I don't have an answer for how a road was graded or whether a ditch was done right or all those type of things. Uh, that, that's thing one. And, and thing two, we've been finding that none of us are having the time to do the workload that's required, uh, things like we're getting ready to do the town parking lot and putting out RFPs and meeting with people. You know, we have this uh, proposal for the new road well, where they want some road work. And, you know, that's really a job for a road commissioner, road foreman to take care of, not the select board where the board's having to fill this position. So, and there's been a lot of frustration on both sides uh, trying to resolve this. And so, um, you know, the definition of insanity is keep trying the same thing and hope you get a different result. And so what we're trying to do is find another way uh, it's not a new idea. I guess Cabot has tried it. It didn't work for them, but East Montpelier, has, or excuse me, Callis has a road commissioner uh, similar to what we're discussing. It's been working quite well for them. So we felt that it was time to give this a try. Uh, this is a town appointed position, so it's not a, technically a town employee like a, like a, one of the road workers. It's, it's similar to any other appointed position that we have. Um, it is a one-year appointment uh, like the other town positions. So that's, that's the thought process. 
So um, we, you know, we, uh, we did receive a, a, a resume from Chuck Batch Elder when expressing interest in, in taking up this position. Um, and we did interview him last Tuesday. Um, and there is some thinking to, to appoint Chuck. Um, I, um, I have some reservations about that and partly just about, not so much about Chuck, um, but more just the process that we're, that we're undergoing where, you know, this issue kind of just sat dormant for a few months. And then when Chuck expressed interest, we were you know, kind of moving ahead on it and and maybe you know i'm feeling that maybe we're moving ahead a little bit too quickly I, I would like to um you know we really don't have a job description yet of what we would like the road commissioner to do or or you know roles that we would like them to fulfill and i you know i would like to also open this up there might be other people that would be interested and also qualified to do this, we did receive one uh, resume from um, uh, um, another uh, person who was interested in the position. So uh, um, I would really like us to kind of open this up to the public and see if there are other people um, who would be interested in this position rather than just kind of taking the first person that stepped forward and um, and having you know appointing them as the road commissioner um i don't have anything um personal against chuck and i do realize that he has the knowledge for you know maintaining the town high highways town roads um but there are some concerns i have about chuck i'm not sure of, of his other qualifications in dealing with you know state people or civil engineers or you know other that uh, you know more the bureaucratic end of um what a road commissioner would be normally expected to do and and also you know chuck would not be here in the winter as so I'm, I'm really kind of concerned on how he could serve as a road commissioner when he's um down south um so those are some concerns that i have it's mostly about the process i would i would really like us to open this up and try to find, um, you know, just see if there are other people interested in what their qualifications might be. And, and I would also like us to put together, um, you know, work together to put together a job description of. Um, well, we do have a job description that we looked at last Tuesday, Mike. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. and obviously we're, we're inventing this because it hasn't existed for quite a while. It's not a new position, but the description certainly would be um, and I know at our meeting the other time, we kind of looked at those duties and said that we were pretty comfortable with that as a start. And obviously there'd be some changes made. You know, I'm pretty comfortable looking at, at uh, Chuck's resume that he's qualified to do this job. I do understand that it, it, uh, it looks like we don't want any, but that's not true. The problem is that the lots is going on right now. We do need someone in there as that go between uh, to take care of some of the issues that we're ab not able to address in our position. At least I know I can't. Uh, mm -hmm. because of time. I just don't have the time to be down there dealing with this myriad of issues. Mm -hmm. I'm quite comfortable with Chuck. I know his qualifications and, and I'm comfortable with him doing that job. Okay. Diana, do you, it looks like you have your hand up. I do. And I even made a little audio, vis a little visual aid, but it's not really going to work. So I'm yeah, just we can't see it. it. It's, no. I'm just going to read this. Okay. Uh, just some questions for simple questions. Some of my Obviously, you're already considering both. First, what is the need? Um, what are the job duties outlined somewhere? What are the qualifications that are required for a road commissioner? And what skills does a current applicant have that our current road staff does not have? So I, I hope you'll think about those things. We have. I certainly have. You want to answer them? Uh, ask the first question, I'll answer. Well, I'll give you the best shot I can give at it. Okay. Go ahead. I, I don't remember all the questions. Go ahead. I yeah, well, couldn't what, read was, them. what was the need? I think you addressed that. I've explained the need. You think that there's not an. Uh, yeah. All the yeah, things. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can, I can explain to you. I, I, I can't, and obviously Michael and Brian can't fill this role. There's a lot of. Uh, we get people coming in the meetings. We can't even answer the questions. I don't, I'm not out on the highway. So when someone complains, we don't know. And then there's friction. 
um, at the road crew level because they feel like we're not standing up for them. But it's difficult to stand up for somebody when you don't know what's going on. And that's, that's, a, fair, that's a fair statement. So um, I've made my case the best I can of the need. I can tell you um, there needs to be some more oversight because there's a large gap in between what the duties of the current road foreman are and what actually needs to be done. And so who fills those uh, positions? Who, who does that work? It's, it can't be any of us. That's the problem. And so I'm open to suggestions, but all I haven't heard any which would fill that gap. Well, one alternative that we did discuss on Tuesday and which is actually the one that um, I am in favor of is to um, have our road foreman, uh, Greg Parkhurst, become more active um, in the select board meetings um, so that when there are people, town residents who come in with questions, he would be able to address them um, there on the spot and where we wouldn't have to play the go-between role that we've been playing. And Greg is willing to do that. But, you know, and that said, I do realize that there are some real tensions between um, the select board um, and Greg um, that seem somewhat unresolvable, um, you know. Yeah, I mean, I want to clear up one issue. There's some, uh, um, Ron has cast some aspersions on the board members. I can let everyone know in this meeting, I have no personal issues against Greg. Um, he may have some with me. I don't know. He's never shared those with me. So I wanted to clear that I do not have any personal issues. Uh -huh. And I have no personal issues with anybody on. Or on the road department, right. The department either, yeah. So that's not an issue. Absolutely not. Good. So you had some other questions, Diana? Well, I just wondered what the job duties were going to be and how, how much uh, they were going to help with some of the things that you've been doing as far as water quality, new regulations, and working with the state agencies, and like Paul said, doing RFPs and, and uh, um, the more administrative stuff. Well, that, that is a role that, that I have undertaken, and, and I, you know, I know. I, I, I tend to call my call myself my job description or my t job title for that is town highway um, administrative assistant where I basically and that was an agreement that the select board made with um, Greg Parkers when he became the road foreman that I would take over the roles of um, you know dealing with different state agencies um, grant writing for different road projects um, dealing with um, you know people town residents who might have concerns, um, you know, trying to address them um, and, you know, kind of being a go between, between the road crew and, um, which I, w I was doing that a little bit for our former road foreman, um, Barry Daly. Um, uh, so that, that's kind of a role that I've taken on and the town has been paying me um, for three, three hours a week for that work. Um, you know, Usually it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit less, but that was kind of a, an amount that we agreed upon. Um, so you that help, is- Are you hoping to pass that, those duties on to a road commissioner? Um, that would be our goal if we did this, if those duties would go to the road commissioner. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I mean, some of the duties we'd be looking at too is there's, there's uh, um, issues that we've identified that um, need to get dealt with ditching some uh, highway maintenance. Uh, the state's put out our 90% uh, of our roads have berms along the edges about dealing with those berms, keeping the culverts clear, the check dams. So the idea with this person, they'd be more uh, weekly interacting with the um, uh, road crew to make sure that those things were getting done because frankly, when they're not done, they're costing us money. You know, if you don't, when you don't maintain that stuff enough, it, it, the gravel you put on, the grading you do doesn't, doesn't stay. So we do Was have there, a list of we do have a list of duties that we anticipate this person doing. Oh, so this person is actually going to work on the roads? No, this person okay. would be overseeing and kind of the road foreman still is in charge of the day-to-day -day operation of the crew. The road commissioner, historically and in this context, would be someone who says, "This is what we're going to focus on this week. We're going to be cutting brush. We're going to be grading. We're going to be doing whatever that is," um, and kind of sees to it. Do that? I can't hear you. The road foreman doesn't do that? Uh, there's been some issues uh, between us and the road foreman on that, yes. Do they just need more help? Somebody to go out and cut brush? I mean, you've got 
part-timers that could be working more during the summer because right but you're, you're making my case for me again we we as the board don't have the time to be daily going down there to see that the hours that we're putting in are getting maximized as, yeah. as sitting and looking at it from a taxpayer we're putting a third more uh into hours of highway maintenance than we ever historically did Mm -hmm. And we're finding there's some gaps in the work getting done. I don't know what the reason is for that. Um, our hope is to try to get a handle on that because one would assume if you put in more hours, you should get more work done. I don't have an answer to why that is. The hope is that this person would be able to stay on top and say, this is what we're able to get done with the time that we're putting in. Because historically, we've had two town employees. Now we have the equivalent of three because we have two part-times that are splitting the, the 40 hours. So again, that's that's the issue that I see, and I don't know how to address it without more oversight of the road department. So when do we, ask, when do we get so, to ask questions? Um, just a second, um, Heather. Uh, I just so wanted Leith, to finish Diana's list there. Okay. So Leith, um, can you admit Skip Lindsay? He's hey, go coming. ahead, Heather. Yep. Well, I guess I have, I have <clears throat> how many hours are we anticipated this job to be? And how, what is the salary to this job? And oh, well, okay, shouldn't sorry. this person, well, and the most important question I feel like is whomever is hired for this position, shouldn't they be a year round resident when the winds are howling at 20 below and we well, you know what happened last winter and poor Pete went over the freaking rails. We need all hands on deck, but our foreman is not going to be in town for when he's actually needed as well as pushing papers and doing the other duties that are required. I hear you. I mean, the person we have may be gone for the winter and that's something we'll have to work through. <laughs> But okay, that that doesn't. Right, I don't. Like I, I'll just ask you the same. What is your solution then, Heather? I just I, I'm looking I, for I, solutions. The, I I think we should look at more options and and do more interviews and see who other qualified applicants may be. I okay. don't have the solutions exactly, but it doesn't seem like it's a logical solution to hire somebody that's not going to be here and invested in our very small community at a year-round residence. And that's one of the concerns that I have also. Um, and I don't share that concern. Okay. How so is that not? Okay. Did, I know, Paul, we wanted to hear. Did Diana, did you get right, so that's, questions? Right. Yeah, I didn't get to answer all her questions. Did Paul get a well, chance I didn't to. Get, uh, about the. I don't know if she's hearing me or not. Qualifications of someone on the screen. You, you haven't done a job description, so you don't have a. No, you, that's misinformation. We do have a job description. Okay, but you don't have a, the qualifications. Uh, uh, basically, by statute, there are no, uh, the, if you look at the history of road, for, road commissioners, they used to be elected. Mm -hmm. And then in the early 70s, they changed them to appointed by the town right. select board. So there is no list by statute of what those qualifications are. So essentially, no. we make that up. That's what you have right. to do because there's nothing there. Right. We obviously uh, would pick somebody who matches the list of the things we want them to do. I think Michael's frozen. Mm. Uh-oh, Michael froze. Yes, he is. <laughs> and you had one more question, or was that all of them? Well, I just wondered uh, if, if you've already interviewed someone, does that person have skills that our current road staff doesn't have? Uh, he has the skills needed to do this job, I believe. Brian and Michael can weigh in. I know Michael froze and disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he has the qualifications to do this job as well. Was anybody else interviewed for the position? No. Why? Uh, it's just an appointed position. It's no different than the, uh, anybody else we've appointed. I guess we could do that. I can speak for me. I, I, ha I do not have time to keep working on this. Was it ever vetted or warned or publicized that this position was going to be filled before Chuck was interviewed for it? Nope. No. And how is that fair to the other people in town who may or may not be qualified for this position who never got a chance to even be considered for it? Because uh, it's not very much of a position. It's going to be less than 10 hours a week. 
okay, but that still doesn't answer the question as to why other people weren't given the opportunity. It does answer. We just, we didn't do that. I guess we could do that. I, I gave you the answer that I don't have time to go through a long process to do this. I can tell you that the needs are great right now and I don't have any more time to work through this process. If someone has a better idea and they want to implement it, just asking. I'm just telling you, okay. we, we probably disagree on this point. I understand that it's, that it, you could get another candidate. I see this as someone who is available to do it, to try this out. If this right. doesn't work, we don't have to keep doing it. That's you my did. idea. I mean, I don't, I'm not one of these people who's gonna to stick to something that doesn't work. And I'm just saying the system we have now doesn't work and I'd like to try something different. And I did hear you say that it would be a one year appointment as we're trying it out. Correct. And that by statute, it's a one year appointment. So it's so not like you hired you someone and they're stuck in the job forever. <laughs> so you think you're going to end up with more road work by this person being like a more of a manager? That's correct. That's they're the whole. Find out that people are just sitting around doing nothing at the off at the garage, and they. Well, I've never said that. I don't know where that came from. Well, you said there was stuff that wasn't getting done, and it used to get done. Um, I'm saying we spent a third more uh, on road maintenance than we historically did. And there's a lot of work that's not still getting done that used to get done. Things like brush cutting and things like that. Yes, mm -hmm. that doesn't, I mean, don't put words in my mouth that I said that they're sitting around the garage doing nothing because I've never said that. That was your statement. Yes. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to say that. I meant... You, right, because I would never say that. I have, I have respect for the people that are down there and I think that they work hard. Yeah. I think that they could benefit for some additional oversight that we can't provide. Again, if you look at the job description of the road foreman and the duties that we need done, you have a gap there. And I, we need to fill that gap somehow. So I'm here by phone at the moment. I don't know what happened to my You froze. Connection. You had a silly yeah. expression on your face when you froze too. I know. Good thing you didn't hear what I said afterwards, though. That's okay. Um, so, um, yeah, and I was actually, in my frame, I was moving and everybody else was frozen. But, oh, really? Yeah. I should have so, taken a picture because you had a really silly expression. Yeah, well, um, Ellie has disconnected our modem and we'll hook it back up again and hopefully I'll get, be reconnected. But, but otherwise, we'll just carry on with me on the phone, I guess. Okay. It's a little weird. Um, so I missed part of the discussion, um, which is okay. Well, I just finished answering uh, uh, Diana's question and then Heather and I discussed about um, whether, uh, why we didn't post it. And I just explained that we didn't and I didn't have time to do that and just took the opportunity because someone who was qualified was interested in doing the job. I particularly like that it's a town resident. That was the conversation that you missed. Okay, okay, yeah. So, um, are there any other questions that I do have one quick comment um, okay I know that the there's been some special projects in the last couple of years like the Foster Hill Road project and several and Chartier Hill things like that and the, those some of those special projects are taking more time from the road crew so when they're asked to go and do, you know, this thing for a grant or that thing for a grant or this project or that project, or they're being called to do something specific and they have to go across town to fix it. All that costs time. And I think that that might be part of why there's been such an increase in um, when some of the other things are getting done because their resources hold to other things. Yeah. And we, we you know, we had discussed have discussed that and, and what we had kind of come up with is that we would not take on um, any more special projects so that the road crew this summer would have um, the time to focus on some of the other issues like cleaning ditches or uh, cutting brush or whatever. There is one project that didn't get finished last fall on Shardier Hill that um, that was a grants and aid um, project that, uh, you know, if we finish it, we can um, hopefully get paid <laughs> reimbursed for that. Um, so I do ag agree with you, Laura, that there has been a lot of extra work. Part of the issue for everyone to understand is that the state has gotten involved and has made things worse. You'll be shocked by this. Um, but uh, all of these projects and the way they have to do them take a lot of time to do to the road department's credit. 
and then they take a lot of extra maintenance. Again, agree with Laura 100%, but this is why we need enough, we need someone to help manage what actually gets done because a lot of the structures that they're having us install, if they're not maintained properly, it's exacerbating the road washing out and causing a lot of siltation and leaching that we don't want. So but again, that's why we're doing this. So why not give them the opportunity this summer to do some of the regular maintenance stuff because they won't be diverted so they can catch up on some of that stuff before implementing something so drastic? Well, well, this isn't drastic. This is a change of oversight. Nobody's losing their position and no one's going to be changing what they're doing. Right, but rather than spend the money on somebody to tell them what to do when they already seem like they know what they what to do why not spend the money to increase the amount of hours they could actually put in to catch up on some of this back stuff pay the part-timers to do you know some more hours and and that's where the impact is going to be where the when the hours are actually there and they can actually do more work rather than have somebody tell them to do more work but have nobody able to do it right nobody's going to be telling people to do more work we're trying to do the work more efficiently with what needs to be done if that makes any sense Nobody's going to lose their job over this. And the only thing that's going to happen is um, um, someone that's going to say, we're doing this this week and then come take a look at it. Um, you know, we're not in a position, and, again, and Greg and Michael can speak, to hire uh, more people at this time at a full-time 40-hour a week. We're paying 40 hours split between the two part-time people. And if they, is it more than 30, I think, then we've got to start paying benefits. Um, and I don't know if we're ready to make that decision. There has been discussion of going to a third full-time road person. And again, having someone kind of watching this may tell us that that's a good idea. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but we're really not in a position right now to add more hours into the road work. Go ahead, a part-time person can, can, still, can still work more hours, more than 30 hours. If they're still part-time, you know, once they're constantly working full-time more than 30 hours they have to get benefits but otherwise it okay but that's you know again adding more hours because we were over budget last year we're taking a real focus to try to not be over budget um because the taxes took quite a hit last year we're trying to maximize the amount of work we're getting out of the hours we're currently paying that's what we'd like to do any other questions discussion I just think more time needs to be taken before they decide on a specific person or, you know, I uh -huh. think there needs to be more discussion. Mm -hmm. I agree. I appreciate Michael's caution. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I guess I agree too. And, and I, um, you know, I'll, I'll let Paul call a vote on this. Um, you know, whether we appoint Chuck Batchelder as the road commissioner, but I'm going to abstain from this vote um, for uh, these the reasons that I expressed earlier, and that I feel that we, you know, we should probably put this position out to see if there are other people that are uh, qualified to do this work. The one resume that we did receive um, was um, made me realize that there could be other people um, interested in this job. Um, and that's, I mean, that's kind of the main issue for me is just the process of doing this. Um, and, and also, you know, there is the concern about, you know, Chuck not being here in the winter. Um, that is an important time to have somebody around. Um, so, so those are my, you know, and I, I also expressed earlier that, um, you know, I would, kind of like to see us try to work with our present road foreman to to fill in some of the gaps that we that we see and and I and I do understand the tensions that are very real there that have that have, are making this hard to do um, so I understand the frustration on no with, Paul said there's no tensions well, not for me well I don't know <laughs> well I mean guys I'm being as honest as I can to you I can tell you that I had a conversation, the second conversation I had with this person, they called me a liar for some reason, if we're gonna oh, air yeah. this out. I, that's, what I, that's what I mean. I, yeah. Can I talk please? <laughs> I am an honest person, I have no personal issues with that. And you can smirk all you want, Diana, but you know, I don't. And I take offense to the smirking and the giggling like a little girl in the background. 
<laughs> so just cut it out. It's inappropriate. Okay. I don't like being charged. I don't have a problem with Greg. Okay. 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 If Greg has a problem with me, which he has said he has, you were sitting in the meeting. We yeah. want to air out stuff that's been said. I that's mm -hmm. for him to work out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can express frustration so that you all are aware that sometimes clear uh, forthright direction has been given to our road foreman who flat out doesn't do it. Now, I don't know what you do as an employer-employee relationship. Anyone who's ever had an employee, what do you do when an employee doesn't do what you ask them to do? I'm waiting to hear an answer. That's what we're dealing with. Brian, are we dealing with this? I think we've seen some cases of it, yeah. So, um, and again, I, because of employee-employer uh, relationships, I can't share a lot of those conversations. But I can tell you that it's been frustrating mm -hmm. because I'm not used to a circumstance where you have an employee who basically doesn't do what you ask them to do and then argues with you about it. And I'm aware that's what of what we're dealing with. We're going to, mm -hmm. that's as much as I can share without, you know, I can't talk about private conversations we had in an employee employer meeting. Mm -hmm. So I don't like this turned around on me and that's what me made me upset. I am simply trying to get the most bang we can for the town's dollars. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do. And I've run into significant frustrations trying to do that. I would think if that's the case that you shouldn't interview other people. I've heard what you said. So I'm gonna make a motion that we appoint Chuck Batchelor as road commissioner for a one year term. Oh. <laughs> I'll second that motion. I'm gonna abstain from right. voting. Yeah. Is there more discussion? Yeah. You gotta call the vote though, Michael. Okay, I'll call the vote. Sorry. Um, so all those in favor of hiring Chuck Batchelder as a road commissioner for a one year term, say aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstaining, um, aye. I, I'm abstaining from voting. Mm -hmm. So, um, Motion's carried, and Chuck Batch Elder is the road commissioner for a one-year term for the town of Woodbury. Okay. So let's move on. Um, so um, the, there's uh, some folks that have a camp up on um, the Woodbury Mountain Road. Um, I've been speaking with uh, Kim Dennis, who's part of the couple that own that. I can't remember the her husband's name. Um, but they, they have asked the town, requested the, the town that um, they've actually made two requests. Um, they want to improve the road um, up to their camp. Um, then they would like to make, they would like to, to remain as a class four road and they would do the improvements. Um, but they would like the town to uh, reclassify the section of road um, leading up to their property, which is about a 100 feet long on the um, running through the property of a woman named uh, Chris Byram, um, who, and I'm not quite sure, the reason that they want that section of the road to be class three is so that the town will um, plow it. So, um, and then they said that they would plow the rest of the way up to their cabin. So I'm, I'm kind of confused why they really want that section of road to be class three. And there are strong objections from the woman whose property that that section of the road runs through um, that it become class three. Um, I spoke I'd have with a tough her. time with that too, Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and I have spoken, I've had some different emails back and forth with Kim and I spoke with her on the phone over the weekend. Um, I have no objections to them um, fixing up the you know improving the road there the reason that they want to do this is that they it's a camp that they go to they live in Barrie they go to it um, you know some during the summer and fall um, 
but now they're thinking that they would like to go there more and they're they're thinking into the future that they would actually like to try to live there um, oh, wow. so they would they would like to improve the road um, that's brave yeah and i don't know if anybody else has seen that road but that is a uh, it's a it would be a nightmare of a road to maintain several well at least at least a few times that i know of a significant significant amount of the road has washed down onto Chris Byram's property. Um, back, um, I think, in the later years of Rips being the road for him, and he put in a significant bar at the bottom to try to catch the um, erosion from that road. There's, there's a brook that runs within two feet of the road, right beside the road, down this downhill stretch. And when there's heavy flooding, um, the brook, of course, runs down the road instead and um, that road. Um, so, you know, if if we were to give them permission to improve that section of class rural, we would, I, I would think it would behoove us to really make sure that whatever is done to that road is, is done correctly to try to eliminate the er erosion problems. Um, especially nowadays, you know, we... Um, oh. oh, you froze, Mike. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in. I, I wonder if those people know that in order to uh, construct something to a class three standard, it has to be to the class three state standard, which is very wide and two lanes. And uh, I wonder if they know that. Are they planning on using Chris Byron's driveway as their road up in there? Yeah. I, I think the driveway is part of, is on the road, isn't it? It's a, uh, yeah, it's, kind of just one big wide area and yeah yeah I think the road actually comes down through there Michael froze ah yeah that's a tough one I guess we'd have to go look at that one well this is a, a great job I think to have our, our road commissioner go take a look at it with this person but I can't say that to Michael because he's frozen <laughs> yeah yeah that'd be a great first job for him yeah good a first job for Chuck there they claim that somebody from the town told them that the bottom of the road could be upgraded to class three. And I can't imagine who would have done that. Yeah, it wasn't me. I mean, historically, uh, with permission, that's happened before, but no one's talked to me about it. You, Brian? It was a while, must have been a while ago when they first yeah. built up there. But my, my well, I kind of want to wait for Michael to come back. I mean, my thought would be to have Chuck go take a look at it with the folks and come back to us and... Uh, Give meeting. us some kind of proposal. Yep, that'd be a great thing. Hit the ground running. I don't believe Michael. they've submitted a plan at all. So, uh, Michael's back by phone. You froze, I'm Michael. I, this is getting to be a drag. Um, so Michael, what, what I had said is this is probably a great job for Chuck to go take and talk with these folks and look at what they'd like to do and to come back to us with a, a proposal of what either they can do um and what we would allow them to do because you know to try to stay consistent with with the uh, other class four roads where we've wanted to approve any work done even on the class four part right um i i would agree that um that, you know and i mentioned to kim that basically that they would need to meet with um you know the town to go over what would need need to be done um with the stream right there we may need to involve um somebody from dec um with the work that they they um, think that they would like to do on right. the road, they what Kim mentioned was that they you know they would probably hire someone obviously to do this, and um, we would probably have to have a site visit and and discuss um, what would need to be done on that road. Um, and I would imagine that we should probably consult with um, one of the stream engineers um, also. Um, well, again, that's going to be really incumbent on them. Um, the question for us really is what work would we allow them to do to the class four road would be question one and question yeah. two would be um, would we uh, accept uh, whatever their little map showed like a hundred feet of that road if they upgraded it to class three would we accept it to continue to maintain it and plow it in the winter so there's really two questions to answer two questions. Yeah. and my feeling about the class three is that um, we don't need to do that. It's just a hundred. It's basically it would be uh, Chris's driveway. Correct. She right. She doesn't want that to happen. Um, right. Right. So, and if there were, if there are 
okay with plowing um, the rest of it, which is the, the harder part, um, then they should be okay with just plowing it right out to the county road too. Um, one of the things I think that would need to happen, and it's mostly a neighbor thing, is that they would need to work out some kind of agreement with Chris about, you know, um, how that would happen in the right. winter time. Okay. Right, because I don't know where the actual road is. That's why I kind of said this is probably a good one to have the have Chuck go meet with them and work that out and then bring it back to us. Yeah, I I did send some photographs, but I would encourage. You know, Chuck or you or Brian to just take a look at it. The piece of road. I, I'm going to. I'm actually going to go take a walk up there this week when the sun shines someday. I hope that happens where I don't need That's, snowshoes. Right. The piece of road that they are trying to fix is a real nightmare. It's, yeah, I've never been up it, so I have an interest. But but really, this is a this is one of those gaps I was talking about. Is a great job for someone like Chuck who we have us do that. Bring us someone knows what they're doing. Get a proposal to us to say this is what we should agree with with the landowners. And I would yeah, in the past, Chuck, well, before your time and before Chuck's time, the town has never upgraded a class four road to a class three unless there were three full-time residences on the road. Yeah, well, the road, so the road I'm on back in the 80s, the landowners uh, fixed the road to class three and then the town took it over. They did it in two segments and there was only one house per time. So that did happen in the past. Where was that? Yeah, that that's what uh, that County Road. Other no. That's what's happened with other class uh, four roads, uh, Bailey, Br Bailey Bridge Road Bridge and Willow Road. Road. All of those yeah. were improved it, by the- My, my section of the road was class three from Bob Lord's camp down to where Mark Sassy lives. And it was improved in two or three different sections. But again, I wasn't here, but the way it was expressed to me was that if they brought it up to the class, class three standard, the town took it over. I don't think that's our official town policy, but that's what's been done. Right, and, and this road, um, there, I, as I would, strongly urge the town not to do yeah. anything to uh, upgrade it to class three. It's not, not yeah. necessary. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with that, Michael. Yeah. But again, I think that's a good one for Chuck to go take a look at it with those property owners and then come back with a proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that too. So you good with that, Chuck? <laughs> you gotta turn Chuck's microphone on. <laughs> You're still off. We need Leaf. to have okay. an email for Chuck. You're on, Chuck. Send him some of these. Kenny. You're on. Okay, go ahead. Well, I'm on now. Yeah, I yep. can do that. No problem. So, Michael, can we send him? Can you send Chuck the contact information? I will. I'll send him the contact information. And then maybe report to us at the next select board meeting about what should be done. I will get a hold of them as soon as I get the information and see if okay. I can get it set up before the next slide board meeting. Perfect, right. thank you. <laughs> so Chuck, do you have an email address? I do. Or would, you prefer I, or would you prefer I just call you on the phone? I mean, I've been communicating with uh, Kim Dennis both ways. Um, I do have an email address. Okay. Uh, do you want it now or do you want me to call you with it tomorrow or what do you want to do? Why don't, why don't we catch up on the phone and do that tomorrow? All right. Sounds good. Okay. So um, any more questions, comments about uh, Woodbury Mountain Road um, and the property owners that would like to um, upgrade it a bit? Nothing from me right now. Nothing from me. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, um, so um, my wife just tried to reconnect me and it says that <laughs> unable to connect. So I'm just going to continue on by phone. Um, All right. So there aren't any of these. Don't ask me for help with technology. I can't help you. Right. Yeah. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is the uh, 4900 um, insurance claim. And it's just an update, really. Um, we've been kind of scrambling and going through files trying to find the title which um, was, is needed and uh, I did find today um, Diana pulled some files out for me uh, I found a copy of the title um, it's not the original title but I'm hoping the copy will do for what passive yeah. needs because you don't need a title once it's 15 years old for DMV anyway okay all right mm -hmm. so um, I will get a hold of um, the person from passive and and um, what they see if that's going to be okay and uh, hoping that it is the other question is I got a, a 
response from um, Passive that um, there, no one has bid on the truck at all. So um, they would come and haul it away for us, or we could, um, you know, scrounge from it whatever we can for parts. Um, Greg has mentioned that the tires are good on it, and there's a plow that goes with it that might come in handy for something else. Um, uh, of course, then it would be up to us. Um, to uh, hire a record, a haul, whatever pieces are left away. Um, we, we could sit onto it for a little bit and see if there is a possibility of, of getting, um, you know, uh, a used truck that might, we might be able to use some parts from that truck from, you know. That'd be um, a good idea. So, so I guess I'm just trying to get a sense um, from the rest of the select board, whether we should just hang on to that for the moment and, and um, yeah, I mean, my read of that would be if there's some value to it, to the highway department or the town, then we should keep it. If uh, when Greg and Chuck look at it, they decide there's no value really, then you might as well just have them haul it away. Okay. Because right. we'll have to pay to haul it away anyway. And if they can haul it away for under the insurance claim, that'll just save us some money. But, you know, if the plows are useful, the tires, you know, maybe, you know, if it's only worth a couple hundred bucks, it's going to cost you that to throw it away. Yeah, that's a, that's a good job for the foreman and the commissioner to get together and tell us what they think is best for that. Okay. Cause I don't right. know. So, we'll, so I'll let the person from passive know that we'll, we're going to hang on, hang on to the, the 4,900 and, and, um, you know, glean from it what we can. And then, um, then, you know, it'll be up to us to, to have whatever's left hauled away. Um, Good. Sounds then, right. Maybe. Yep. Okay. Um, so as far as, um, Greater repairs. I know that Tim McClay did come and look at the greater. Um, I don't think we've heard back from him. Did you hear anything from him, Chuck? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Brian has a quote on the part and the labor, and I believe Paul does. And yes, I do. He, I actually went and picked it up. We okay. didn't get to get it to Michael because we just barely got, I got this at 4.30 tonight, Michael. That's, that's fine. No, that, I don't have a problem with that. So what that's he's fine. got is a quote from for twenty seven seventy five fifty six for the parts, okay. and three fifty for the labor. And I don't think does that include changing the oil chuck or is that going to be oil done it with the? Not. So that we everything they would do the oil change. The town would. They will. Yeah, the road crew is the, the road crew is definitely is planning on doing the oil change, and they've already um, replaced the. Heater, blower, motors. Oh, uh, perfect. Well, uh, Greg told me they replaced one. They just got the other one, but they plan on replacing the heater motor. And yeah. uh, they told me that they were going to change the oil and service the transmission, change filters, and, and uh, change the oil in it. This yeah. is for Tim will be fixing the shims on the circle and shimming the yeah. blade up to get it back into specs. Okay. Yeah. So this would be your proposal to go with Chuck. This one from uh, Tim. Should Should yeah. we get back to Ted Lane and see what he what he would charge for just working on the circle? Because his his original proposal was for the heater blowers, a couple of pist blown pistons or leaking pistons, and the the circle and changing the oil. Uh, this is also fixing the pistons, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What's your recommendation, Chuck? I would recommend Tim McClay. I've, he's worked on my excavator personally. I've had great luck with him. Um, he gets 35 bucks an hour, no travel time. Um, it, in my opinion, you can't find a better person. But uh, uh, Mike and uh, Greg are fully in favor of Lane. Uh, I know nothing about it. I'm in favor of whoever has the cheapest price. Right. Then my recommendation would be Tim for sure. Okay. Okay. So I guess I'll make a motion that we hire uh, Tim McClay to fix the grader. I'll second that. Uh, I'd like I'll to make a comment if I could first. Go ahead, Chuck. Okay. That we have to order the parts and get them here, and then we'll call him and he'll come yep. put them in. We However you need to do it, it's on you. All right, you got it. All right. So um, all those in favor of having Tim McClay do the repairs to the, the grader? 
say aye. 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 Okay. Good. So Tim McClay will will do the repairs. And that Chuck, that should get the grader up to snuff. As far as I, from what I can understand, yes. So one question that came up: Does we know if the tires are loaded on the grader? We don't for a hundred percent, but within the next day or so, I will. Okay, if we can figure that out, because that someone asked the question, I didn't have an answer to that question. Right. I don't Chuck think they have, it. but I'm okay, not we sure. Would, we would Peter, probably want to do that, wouldn't we? Peter, they are not. They are not. Okay, thank you, Laura. So yes. we should probably get that done too, as well. That's gotta. That's gotta be right in. That's gotta come right along because that grader is only working at about a third capacity. Right. Because I know the weight's an issue. They need to be heavier. They do. So the either other of the board members have an issue with getting those tires loaded. Excuse me. Uh, no, if not they're not, if they don't help it work better. Yeah. So go ahead, Chuck. I think the board is saying go ahead and get them loaded. Well, I'll check it out to be, to make sure. I'll talk to Peter and Greg, yep. and okay. I will get them loaded. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. So um, the last thing on the highway report agenda is um, spring roads update, and I really don't have much um, to to put add to that or share with that. I do know that um, most of the road, a lot of the roads, did get graded last week with the uh, dry weather. Um, to my knowledge, I think pretty much every road has been graded once, except maybe for uh, parts of Dog Pond Road and parts of Cranberry Meadow Road. Um, but I don't know that for sure. Um, and I do know that um, the excavator now is over at the bottom of Chartier Hill and the road crew is um, going to try to finish up that grants and aid work um, so that we can um, get that grant report um, done. And, and just, um, as I mentioned that, I think I should let you know the select board know and Chuck know also that um, there are two other reports that I've been trying to get to um, for different uh, grant money that we've received. One is the final report for the town highway uh, inventory work, um, also for the, the VTRANS emergency grant that we received um, to fix the bank um, at the bottom of Cabot road into the village. Those are two reports that, that need to be finished. Um, I have all of the paperwork here to do them and hope to have them done within the, the next week um, or two. Um, okay. So I, um, I think at this point, just to be fair to Chuck, it would be, I mean, I'm happy to pass that over to him, but I, I do know what needs to be done. Um, and um, and I, I, I would appreciate it if you would take care of that, Mike. Yep. Okay. I will. It's been, it's been on my list to do. Um, now, one other question I had when we're on uh, highway portion was there's some issues apparently with the excavator. Is that something we can get some quotes on? Greg already um, has quotes. What's that, Chuck? I've started. Um, I haven't followed all the way through with it, but there's going to be some extensive groundwork. It's going to have to be done on that excavator. The change of shot. Um, I haven't got into the rolls and the idlers and the sprocket yet, but I'm thinking that it's going to be fairly extensive. Okay. Okay. Greg, Greg has has some estimates for some work. He's talked with someone. I'm not sure who, but um, he does. He has um, some. Um, Somebody, I don't know whether they've come and looked at it or whether he's gotten estimates for something for things that need. I to know be that he's been in touch with Pete Repair. I haven't talked yeah, to Greg yeah. about it all that much. Um, okay. But within the next few days, I expect to. Okay. All right. He Perfect. Has, Thank he you. Has, he has started some work on that. Yeah. yeah. Cause I would, you know, there's been a lot of discussion around that needing to be fixed and we just, I want to get on it, you know, yeah. if it needs doing. Well, I've seen the tracks. And it definitely needs to be fixed. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions, um, comments uh, under the town highway report? Uh, nothing for me. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Um, so let's move on to the town zoning application um, revision. And um, I know. Um, that uh, you know, once it was posted, there were several comments about it. I am aware of some of them. I did answer um, some questions um, that came 
that I became aware of on Front Porch Forum, and and I just have a general feeling that with the um, you know the comments that I read and, and the questions that, and and uh, the people have, that I would like to just put off any select board decision on the um, zoning permit um, revision until we can actually have a public hearing, um, a, a real public hearing, not on a computer, but in a space. Um, uh, so that I thought we were going to anyways, Mike, so that's a great idea. Yeah. Anyway. That sounds like a motion, so I'll second that. Okay. Um, are there any, you know, I know there are people here tonight that had comments um, and probably are here for this uh, agenda item. Are, are there any, is there any discussion from anyone else? I, I can speak for me. All I've heard is negative comments about it, so I'm not comfortable with moving forward with it at this time. Right. That's all. That's pretty much all I've heard too. Looks like Skip's I, raised his hand. Okay. Go ahead, Skip. I I can't see anybody. I have no connection. Yeah. Go ahead and turn your mic on, Skip. Okay. My mic's on. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, I do agree with the with the content of the new zoning permit. I don't really agree with, with the fees that are proposed. So I like the idea of having a public hearing to discuss the fees. And you know, we, we understand that this document came mostly from uh, Hardwick. So ag again, I like the content of it, but I don't like the fee structure. I think the fee structure is too excessive. That's just my, my comment. And just for background, for other folks that may be attending this meeting, um, the Skip just mentioned that um, you know we received a complaint from Hardwick Electric um, that there was nothing in the zoning permit about their right of way for their power lines, and there was an incident that happened in Woodbury where uh, that wasn't part of the consideration for the zoning. Um, and the Hardwick Electric was encouraging us to have something in the zoning permit that addressed their right of way for their power lines. Uh, and that was what began the uh, work to revise the zoning permit. Just a little background information for those folks that might not know that. Yeah, so Michael, there was also the need to update the application. And I don't think the fee or is mutually exclusive with updating the application. So I don't know what your thoughts are of updating the application for the needed information to include the power line issue to resolve that. So that can be re resolved sooner than later, but leaving the fee issue off until we resolve that. Right. I mean, we could, we could do it all at once. Uh, I'm fine either way. I know our zoning administrator is aware of the issue from Hardwick Electric and we'll definitely be looking out for that, whether it's in sure. a permit or not. Um, what What is your preference, Bob? Would you rather update the application after we've addressed the fee issue or update it now and then update it again later with a new fee if that happens? Boy, I, th I thought it was helping out. I didn't know it was going to cause all this trouble. <laughs> Nothing simple, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever, uh, whatever needs to be done. Uh, uh, this could be a, it doesn't have to be done now for sure. Okay, so we can wait on it all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be my preference. So we've got a motion to do that. So I think Diana's working on some things too, uh, some changes and uh, and uh, revisions from her experience over the years, and she'll get those, I guess, to the planning commission. Or I haven't seen them, and uh, well, we're getting close, I think. But uh, okay. Uh, we did uh, change the, the yeah. current zoning application so that it does have a question. About it is. Okay. Because I knew there was a concern to get that updated. So that's okay. Then. Okay. That is in there. And most Thank you, Diana. Of what's proposed on the, on the uh, re revision is the same as what we're currently asking. So hope maybe somebody from the Planning Commission who has a lot of graphic skills could uh, clean <laughs> that up some. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Skip. And, and yeah. I want to get it down from, I think it's at four pages now, and could get I it could down, do to, down to two. Hey, uh, Skip's going to talk now. Yeah. I could do that. That's why so Skip will we'll work on that with Bob, or you'll provide it for Bob. Uh, just tell me how you want this constructed, and I can uh, do it whatever, you, whatever way you want, columns, okay. whatever. Okay, do you want to talk with Skip on that, Bob? Yeah, Diana, Diana too. 
It's okay, that'd be great to have something great to work on when we do look at it with the public. Yeah. I think any, the main thing. Any other discussion? Any other comments? I'm good. I think the so, main thing I was trying to get at there is is uh, it was it, it seemed odd to me that it, it was the same amount for a, a, a little uh, pool shed that's eight by eight as it did for a two story. 4,000 square foot house. <laughs> it seems yeah. Well, and again, I think it's a good idea to vet that with the public, and that's what the public hearing will be good to do, because I definitely heard everybody's concerns on that, and uh, let the public weigh in at the public hearing, and we have it. And in fact, most permits would probably be less because of the, uh, the square footage charge. It wouldn't be more money. It would be actually less. That's and, good. Uh, it would encourage some building, I think. But, uh, <laughs> Low interest rates will do that. Yeah, yeah and we're, you know, there, there are a number of, uh, as zoning administrator, I, I see probably right now there's four or five new uh, newcomers to town. Yep. Some are in the future a little ways, but uh, some are right now. I suspect with this current COVID thing, you'll find more people moving to the country coming soon. <laughs> That's what my read is. Except it's snowing again, so. Yeah, is it? I'm not gonna look outside, thank you. <laughs> Don't look outside, anybody. It is. Any more discussion? I'm good. Okay. I'm so, good. Um, I would move that we, um, and did we get a second on the motion? We did, yep. I took your first thing as a motion where you're going to have a hearing at some point in the okay, future. You, okay. I, I seconded it. that. So, so um, I would like to um, bring this to a vote then, uh, hearing no more discussion, that the um, select board um, not uh, vote to um, not approve the uh, zoning uh, permit revisions at this point in time um, and that um, as soon as the pandemic restrictions are lifted so that we could actually be together in a public meeting that we have a hearing um, that allows people to come and, and make comments on the proposed um, zoning permit revisions. Uh, there can be a discussion and, and we'll move forward on the zoning permit um, following that hearing. Kind of a long-winded uh yep statement. that's about right so um yeah so uh all those in favor aye say aye aye all those opposed um so we'll we'll postpone that um approval um subsequent to a, a public hearing sometime in the future whenever um, hopefully sometime this summer um, so next on the agenda, it's, it's basically just an update, but um, I submitted the uh, local emergency management plan um, to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and was informed that there was a second part of the plan um, that needed to also be um, filled out and submitted, and that was uh, um, basically an approval form. Um, so uh, Chance and I have, have gone through that, uh, made a few um, changes, mostly in, in contact information. Um, Chance uh, was gonna send it to me today, uh, signed, and I will sign it um, when I receive that from Chance um, and uh, send that on to the Regional Planning Commission and we should be good with the, uh, the 2020 uh, local emergency management plan um, from there. Um, I know at the last select board meeting, um, we as a select board did approve um, my signing for the town um, of the local emergency plan and, and I, I'm assuming that that will be okay for this other part of the plan. Um, the, the, um, yes for uh, me. Yep. Exactly. So we just need a motion to approve it, Michael? Um, I guess maybe we should just to be. Okay, to I'll be, move that we approve that plan. A second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so approved and it'll be signed and, and sent on and we should be done with that for, for the year. Um, I think at some point in the 
in the near future, um, maybe when we can um, again be together as in a physical space, uh, I'd like to have us, we're, we're supposed to review yearly the uh, local hazard mitigation plan, which is mm -hmm. a plan that um, that we're, town is good for for five years. We recently redid that uh, last year, um, but it, we do we are requested to review it um, once a year. And uh, so I'd like to at some point in the in the future pull that out and and just uh, look at it and see if we you know if there are things that we've done that we felt should be done or just um, and address some of the other issues that came up in that plan. Um, so that's just something to anticipate in some time in the future. Um, something you want to have a special know, maybe, meeting for, Mike? Or no, just it would, it, we could have it as a special meeting. Uh, we could open it up and have it be a public meeting, um, which I, you know, we could do or yep. um, or not. Um, mostly, it could be part of a select board meeting. I, I don't see it as taking a lot of time, but just you know, it's kind of just to try to bring to. Our awareness again, what we felt was needed, and and if we've done, you know, there are different action items. Whether we've, you know, done some of those, or whether you know we should try to to, to do something um, that maybe we haven't gotten to, or that we had, had intended to. It's mostly just to kind of refresh it in our our brains, because you know, I I can remember vaguely some of it, but that's about it right at the moment. So probably would make the most sense that we just do it in a regular meeting once we're able to meet in person again. Yes. Um, Yep, that's that would that will be feel the best to me. Um, Good. You know, after what's happened to me tonight, I'm feeling a little frustrated with this whole Zoom meeting thing. Um, but this has happened before. Yeah, I'm ready for the Zoom meetings to stop myself. Right. And you know, I thought maybe we could just briefly talk about that. We pretty much covered everything on the agenda, but you know, I'm kind of looking to see um, what our governor says about you know May 15th. There was, I, I would assume that. There'll be a kind of a you know a major readdressing of the restrictions that we're working under. Um, there have been some changes that have you know will come weekly from the different um, public uh, meetings that the governor and his his staff have been holding. Um, so I'm kind of looking to what the our governor says about uh, public gatherings um, and also kind of looking to VLCT for for guidance and when we can again meet in a physical setting. Um, my feeling is, is that the, our town office select board room is probably not gonna be appropriate for- too small. Long. Yeah, it's too small. Right at the moment, the community room, which has worked, um, is kind of a backup for the uh, food shelf. So I'm thinking that either the, you know, it, it is a little bit warmer now, although it's snowing out, um, but maybe the town hall could serve um, or the um, the gym in the school, especially if the school yeah. is still. Yeah, because I'm pretty down. sure that when they let us meet, there's going to be distance requirements like six feet away from people and whatnot. Yeah, I, I assume that there will still be the physical distance yes. requirement and probably the mask wearing requirement yeah. too. Yay. But we'll, but we'll see. And, you know, the those larger spaces, you know, the, the gym, especially, um, you know, I, I don't see why that couldn't work for a, a select board meeting. Um, but we'll, we'll see, we'll figure that out when we get there. But I, I'm, I'm hoping that soon, um, you know, we can get back to um, uh, having the public meetings. Um, so I know some people, you know, in those um, face, especially the Facebook messages about, um, you know, our meeting that I think some people are, are feeling excluded from these meetings. Um, and, and I can understand that. Sure. Not our choice. Not our choice. Can I just make a comment about that also? Yes. Yes. Um, I think that there are some people that are actually able to access it better this way from their homes. So I wonder if That's when true. we do, I wonder if when we are able to go back into a public meeting, if there might be a way to live stream it so that people that want to tune in from home can still comment on some of the issues and be more included. That's, that's a good point, Laura. I don't have a problem with that. I agree with you, Laura. We could still try to organize, you know, have it as a Zoom, not, you know, have it as a Zoom meeting for those people who might not want to come to a 
public space or physical space. Um, and maybe the chair or Laura, if you're there, you could be the the technical guru host of that, um, where the you know we had some kind of camera that um, that would you know and a screen that would allow them to to have a, a video presence or an audio presence. Um, and um, yeah, we we should try to work that out. I think that's a great idea. Would be a great hey. idea. Well, hey, Michael and everybody, this is Lee yeah. from HCTV. So. Um, yeah, we, uh, you know, we potentially could live stream your meeting if we have good enough internet, that would be, that would be to the TV. So, um, I'm not talking about a zoom meeting per se, but, um, okay. All right. And what, would, would that give, that probably wouldn't give that person the opportunity to participate other than just watching the, the meeting watching yeah unless you had um well unless you had a phone ready and they could call okay. they could call you directly and do it that, that way could, that could be a possibility yeah. that, that's another option but um okay. to do that we would we would need a, a certain amount of upload speed on the internet so we well, would, i've been told that that the school has actually a, a good wi-fi connection so we could definitely test that out um yeah to make sure if that was what we were going to do. Yep, well, we'll, we, could, we could try it. Yep. Okay, so we'll explore um, how we can have a, a meeting in a physical setting. Um, and, and maybe after, depending on what we hear from our governor and right. uh, we'll yep. um, okay. try. I would, I would certainly like to get back to that myself. So. Uh, I have nothing else on the agenda. Is there anything else that anyone else um, uh, has to? That would oh, Skip's raising his hand. Okay. Go ahead, Skip. So I just have a question regarding the radar speed sign going north into Woodbury, Woodbury Center. Yes. Is, um, there any, Laura, is there any? Is there any way I can help? Is, do you need my help in getting that fixed? Laura, Laura was going to look into that, and I, I maybe actually um, I'll let Laura s uh, speak to that. So I went to use the auditor's laptop, which is what all of the software is installed in, uh -huh. and I'm not sure what happened, but something something happened with it between the last time that I used it and this time. So I was unable to connect to any of the signs. I tried that one to just see if there was a connection, and there was nothing. So. Okay. What I have to do is contact the company that gives us the Bluetooth, um, the little antennas that you plug in. Sure. And I have to have them walk me through. What I think it is is that somebody turned on the Bluetooth in that laptop. And if the Bluetooth in the laptop is on, then the antennas don't work. You have to disable the, the Bluetooth in the laptop to use the antenna to connect to the sure. sign. Yeah. And I attempted to do that, and for some reason it wasn't. <laughs> I have to call the company and have them walk me through it, but I haven't been in the office enough to take that time. I spent a good hour on it last week or the week before last trying to get it to work and I just couldn't. So it's going to be a long phone call with the laptop in hand. Is, is the laptop in the office? What's that? The, la the auditor's laptop is at the office, yes, but it was okay. taken out of the office at one point and I, I don't know if that's when something got tweaked or what, but. Sure, I can, Laura, let me take a look at that. And okay. uh, I'll make sure, well, I'll, I'll try and get it to work. Are, okay. the, uh, are the little antennas in your desk somewhere? Yes, there's a big white envelope, one of those big mailing envelopes, and it has all of the information about the speed signs in it. I have the keys to unlock it on my keychain, so I don't believe that there's one there, but I don't, I don't think you should have to unlock it anyway. Okay. You then I can get you one. But. Okay, cool. If you need somebody to hold the ladder, Skip. I'll hold it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. That's really great of you. I appreciate that. We'll talk about you too when you're out there doing it. <laughs> I'm sure you will. I think it was probably a battery issue with that sign, and I don't know why it's that specific one, not any of the other ones. Yeah, because it would... just. Go ahead. So. I'm sorry. You would think that one would work the best because as a clear shot. You know, to the sun yeah, for the solar, solar. Yeah. yeah. 
Maybe it overcharged so many times that it went bad. Because it's been so sunny. <laughs> well, speaking I mean, of, okay. speaking of overcharging, we should overcharge for whomever is parking that silver sedan. <laughs> I, I can actually fill you in on that. Um, so, so I it took me a while, but I did finally did find out the owner of that car. It it was also parked in the road um, this winter up on Dog Pond Road, um, and and the particular property owner is halfway in the driveway, halfway in the road. So. I talked to that person and they knew who owned the car. Um, I gave them my contact information and um, the person called me. Um, I wasn't home, but they left a message and I called them. They didn't answer, but I left them a message. Um, and, um, you know, I told, he, I was told that the CV joint was broken and that they were going to get a new one and fix it and, and the car would be gone. I gave them until last Wednesday to make that repair and get the car out of there, and otherwise the, the car will be towed away. It's still there, so um, I talked to Brian this morning about that, seeing if we could park the car at his um, garage, and he's willing to have it placed there, but I can't find anybody to tow it. The different um, local small um, operators that were towing uh, cars are out of business. Um, they they were kind of shut down with the pandemic restrictions, and one of them is just kind of folded his businesses and moving out of state. And the other one, um, I left a message. I didn't get a call back. I'll call again. That um, you know, I'm glad you brought that up, Skip, because I um, I wanted to ask the select board. We could try to get somebody from Montpelier to come up and tow that thing, but you know, obviously the bill for doing that is going to be higher. I would assume than somebody local. Where's the car right now? It's been in the town office parking lot, um, kind of at a, parked at a 45 degree angle for over a month now. What happened was the car broke down on Route 14, and right. this property owner up on Dog Pond Road, um, it's basically it's his niece's boyfriend who owns the car, and he right. came down in the middle of the night um, and. Um, you know, pulled the car off Route 14, and that's where they, that was the closest uh, port in the storm for them, was the parking area by right. the town office. So, and that's where it's well, sat ever since. He did tell me that if, you know, if it was still there, and, uh, that he would um, help the kid um, tow it away, but that hasn't happened either. I left right, because we could also report his abandoned vehicle with the state police. They would eventually have it towed away for us. I have reported it to the Ooh. state police, and, and they, t you know, told told me that you know just tow it away. But I could call them again and say that we don't have the means to tow it. There's nobody local that could do it, and would they please do it? Um, right. Maybe they need that. <clears throat> That's what I would suggest. We can just get it gone because I don't think we need to get in the middle of their repair. Right. So yeah. I do have a son-in-law that tows for a company out of Waterbury, and they serve this area. And I don't think it's an excessive amount for them to come out here and tow it. I could ask uh, them. A price idea. Well, I don't think we even need a price because hopefully we would never pay it. The person that who owns the car would have to pay it. Although, you know, there is the question if they never come to claim right. it, you know, what do we do with it then? Because they're probably not going to want to come unless someone guarantees payment. Right. And where do they bring the car? Well, yeah. well it, Brian is willing to take it in his, his yard. Um, and you know the town would pay the the person towing it, and then of course, it, you know, so the town could get stuck with the bill if this kid um, he, um, would more than likely. Mm -hmm. comes to, I mean, he certainly hasn't come forward to actually do what he said he would do to repair it. Um, so I think I'd lean toward just seeing if the state police would have it all the way. Okay, I'll, I'll call the state police tomorrow and 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 see if they mm -hmm. will do that. No, I, I did leave a note on the car probably a, right. three weeks ago, and the person responded by putting another note on the car with his name and phone <clears throat> number, and Ron saw that note and told me it was there, but by the next time I went down there, it was gone. It was blown away. Well, I, I spoke oh. to this person up on Dog Pond Road, and they were aware, aware of the situation. They were, to, were able to fill me in on, you know, who owned it and what, why it was there. Um, and then I, I was able to leave a message. I do have the person's phone number. I still have it. Um, and I was able to leave a message with them. They were able, they did.
did call me back. Um, so we have, you know, I, I do know the person's name. I, I have a phone number to call him. Okay. Um, and uh, he just hasn't come through on what he said he would do. And, you know, I gave him a deadline um, when he said he would was going to get a CV joint and repair it. That was uh, two and a half weeks ago. And so, you know, I gave him a deadline of last Wednesday, which is, you know, now almost a week past the deadline and still nothing's happened. So, you know, I, I, I think it's time to just get rid of it. And, and Agreed. Uh, yep. All right, so I'll call the state police tomorrow, and if they tell me that they aren't going to come and tow it away, um, maybe I'll just check in with somebody and we'll try to figure out. Maybe the next solution is to... If we're going to pay somebody to tow it to Brian's, why not pay somebody to tow it to wherever this person lives? I don't know I'm hoping we're not going to pay it. I'm hoping the state will. Right, well, then yeah. it wouldn't get stuck in Brian's yard forever. No, well, if the state hauls it away, who, I'm not sure it where will, they'll yeah, take it. Well, yeah, that would be best. Yeah, yeah, if the state hauls it away, I don't know where they would take it either. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so let's let's see if that'll happen first, and then and then we'll think maybe a plan B could just to to haul it away locally, and um, you know, and maybe that that we just end up paying for the the record fee, and we have a, a junk car to deal with. Um, yeah, if it gets towed into my place that it may give them a couple of weeks extra to come up with the money that we're going to pay out to pick it up and yeah. get rid of it. Then we'll know for sure. Yeah. I, I was told that the owner is pretty low income person and is probably out of work right at the moment. So, yeah. Um, yeah so I think there's, there's a time frame I have to keep it, then I can just send it. So. Yeah. And I'll, I'll so find out know who state. anymore. Yeah. I'll have a, I'll, when I call the state police, I'll get a sense of the time frame for how long we have to hold on to it, if if that's what happens um, before yep. we can can yep. uh, send it on for salvage or whatever. Now, did you try J and R towing in Hardwick, Mike? I did, and he um, he told me that um, basically, um, you know, he had shut down his business, um, oh, wow. moving out that. of state. Yeah, he's moved, said he's moving away. He, he's oh really? Oh wow. Yep. There's one more up that way, which is Rockwell's. Okay. He's up in Walter. Oh! Can you hear me? Right. <laughs> I can hear you. Hey, just call All Metals and ask them to pick it up. They'll pick it up tomorrow. All Metals will Good. take them. Will they? Perfect. Do that then. <laughs> they don't need a title. They don't need anything. They'll pick it up. They'll get rid of it and be gone. Okay. We'll all make sure the state police are say that's okay first. Okay. Perfect. Okay, but th there's no problem there. They'll be more than glad to come get it. And they won't awesome. cost them anything. All they want is to steal out of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the car's not abandoned. If the per person wants it, it's not doing any, you know, it's not in anybody's way. That's all. I'm well, saying. it is abandoned in our parking lot. Well, it's, yeah, but they're not having church. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, uh, it still's abandoned. They need to come get it. It's ugly. Right. They definitely Before should. I do... Before I do that, I'll give the owner a call too. Give him right. one last chance. Thank we you. beat it around yeah. enough. Yeah. Right. You know, this this is it. You know, we're tired of waiting, and um, we're going to call all metals and and have them tow it away and turn it into a little cube. <laughs> 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 yeah. A car cube. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, anything else about that? Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Skip. I, I had yes, thank you. I had a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, is that is that car in the church parking lot or the town's parking? Well, um, it's kind of right on the line. I th I think it's yeah, in the town's right. parking lot. I don't know if that big iron beam that sticks up out of the ground and if that's a a boundary line or not. Um, but I don't know either over there. <laughs> but either way, it needs to go. Okay. It needs to go. <laughs> Well, the the church owners might not feel that way. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> when I look at it, it seems like it's in the in the town parking lot. I mean, it's where cars that have been at the town office have been parked before, anyway. What about applying to the? I'm not sure if it's the Woodbury Fund or the other. If there's another grant that helps the low income folks in town with like heat and stuff, sometimes. What about applying yeah, to I that? Sylvia Jackson. Yeah, about having yeah. it towed to the owner's home. 
Yeah, I don't think this person lives in Woodbury. I really don't know where he lives. Mm. I'll look into it some more, but um, you know, let's. I would like to to have that car not be there anymore. But That's I'll been long there. enough. He obviously doesn't yeah. want it. Yeah, or he just doesn't have it together enough to deal with it. I'm not sure. Right. Which is but um, I'll do a little bit more um, pumping on this and um, and uh, check in with everybody about it. Okay. Okay. Anything else? I'm Michael? good. I'm good. Michael? Okay. Oh, Robin yeah. speaking. Yes, Robin. I was up in the village yesterday, and I noticed that there's still tin and ladders around the town hall. Am I responsible for getting rid of that, or is Peter the contractor responsible for getting rid of that? Uh, Peter is so here, and he said that he will come and get it. Oh, Thank perfect. You. Okay. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Anything else? I'd like to make a comment, if you can hear me. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know Diana is concerned about my qualifications as road commissioner. I have worked with water resources at the landfill an extensive amount and I certainly want to be a go-between between the town crew and the slight boy to make this work as well as it can for everybody. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Chuck. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? <clears throat> Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. A second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Hearing no's, no no's, um, I hereby declare this meeting adjourned. <laughs>